Hi, thank you so much for joining me in this specially created video. We've created it because the people at ABN asked me if I could do kind of like a wrap, if that's the word, of the ABN 2016 conference. And certainly we can do that. What we're going to do is take a 90 minute segment, my opening keynote, and try and squeeze that into under 10 minutes. So cross your fingers, let's hope we do it. And at the same time, still have some impact on you. First of all, to do that, I've got my computer here so we can revisit some of the things. Let's start with this. This is where it was at the Four Points Sheraton. Uh, now, obviously, we couldn't see that wonderful vista across Darling Harbour because there was a big stage and all of that sort of thing there where we did all sorts of interesting things together, uh, which started, as we said before, with uh, the keynote. Now, uh, there were a lot of things that happened uh, as a result of this, but one of the things that happened is it had a profound impact on me. So much so that a couple of days after the conference, I wrote uh, what has become a widely circulated post now on LinkedIn. You'll see it right there. It says accountants versus bookkeepers. I think I might just ha have had a change of life. I do suggest that you go and look that, uh, find that post. It's a really important read. And it talks about the shift that I've had because until that conference, most of my work was with accountants in public practice. And let's just say I had a particular perspective on things as a result of that. This conference totally changed that. And more importantly, it didn't just shift me. What happened uh, as, as a result of, of, of the conference, but underpinned, I think, by the opening keynote, was that so many people in the room got such a shift as well. Um, and that had to do with some things that we talked about. So let's have a look at those things. We began by acknowledging this that there really has never been a time like this. Disruption is everywhere and it's occurring at a massive, massive pace. And we talked a lot about that. There were a couple of things that we made observations on though that are really important. And one of those, uh, those important things is because of that shift, A, some people are scared of it, other people see it as a huge opportunity. And we'll talk about which one you might want to see it as in just a little while. But we talked about there being a search for meaning and purpose. And as a result of that, there has never been a time for you to matter more in your business. A time when you can move from being dispensable to indispensable. One of the people that says a lot about this is this guy you see on the screen right now. His name is Seth Godin. By the way, if you're not already subscribed to Seth, make sure that you do. SethGodin.com. And he says, as you can see, the challenge is not to be successful. The challenge is to matter. And we gave some things coming up really soon, which helps people do that, as you will see. In fact, we, one of the things we talked about was that frequently people say it's about time, it's about tools, and it's about models. Well, let's take a contrary view to that. First of all, it's not about time. It should never have been about time, but sadly, it's been about time. We need to understand that the client never buys your time. If they do, you're in a losing game. The client buys value. You are sitting on a mountain of value. As I say in that post, you really do change lives. But we don't really understand it, this mountain of value, because we think it's all about time. It's not about time and never has been. We need to change our thoughts around that. It's also not about tools. For example, at the conference, there we were surrounded by wonderful sponsors, each with apps and all of those sorts of things, which, by the way, do make a difference. But it's not about those tools. What it is about is people using those tools to do this, to create different models. It's all about the models. So it's not about time, not about tools. It's all about models. And it's all about understanding something that's really, really core that I think uh, played a huge part in moving people at the conference. And it's this. This, at the bottom of your screen right there, is a friend of mine. His name is Simon Sinek. He, in 2010, wrote a breakthrough book called Start With Why. Now, please don't go out and rush out and go and buy the book. Have a look underneath Simon's photograph there. That is a link, bit.ly Simon at TED, that will take you to an amazing 18 minute TED talk. Just go watch it. 18 minutes and one second of pure brilliance. And that's the link that will get you there. Don't buy the book, go to there. And you'll hear Simon uh, articulate this, these crucial thoughts. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do what you do. Now, I understand that's counterintuitive. Stay with me. People do not buy what you do, they buy what you believe in. Now, 
think about that uh, because if you think about people who have websites, for example, then when I go to websites, what most people are talking about is what they do, not why they do it. So if these two things are true, then it's sort of like we need to reorientate where we think. And think about this as well. The goal is not to deal with everyone who might need your product or service, right? It is to deal with those who believe what you believe. Think about that for a minute. Where do you spend a lot of your time with those who bitch and moan and complain and don't value what you do? It's really working with people who believe what you believe in. That's why uh, something's coming up in a minute that helps you solve that. But have a look at this. It's a little acronym, S-I-W-I-S-N-T. It stands for one of two things. You might want to write it down. Success is what, you, what I say no to, meaning what you say no to, and success is who I say no to, meaning you say no to. Write those things down and think about how that might impact your business by just adopting these things. In fact, one of the great things that we did uh, there was we played a video. I'm going to uh, just show you the opening frame of that in a minute, but the guys at ABN might give you the link to the entire video. But ahead of that video, in fact, they will. Have a look at this. It says your why must be front and center. Simon said that in a private conversation with me uh, not too long ago. And how about this? Once you put it front and center, then what happens is all the truth is that differentiation comes not from excess of what, not from all the things that you do, but it comes from clarity of why. This underpins this moving from dispensable to indispensable. This underpins really building a business that matters in these exciting times. Now, to illustrate that, we, we played a really, really awesome video. You see the opening frame of the video on your screen. Um, now, as I said, the guys from ABM will give you the entire link to that video. It's a comedian. His name is Richard Jr. And he really finds an interesting way in just three minutes or so of explaining the importance of why. So when the guys from ABM give you that link, make sure you watch it. Now that video, when you watch it, as you can see on your screen, there really is amazing. So make sure that you do. But here's the things that flow from that video. First, when you know your why, what you do has much more impact. Secondly, when you know how to clearly articulate your why, and the guys at the conference know how to do that, what you do and how you do it become profoundly more attractive and compelling. In fact, uh, in terms of articulating your why, when you go to see that LinkedIn post that I mentioned uh, just to, you know, at the start of this, go have a look at another LinkedIn post where I talk about how people frequently hide their why. I think you'll get great value from that. But now let's come back here again. Here's the key. Differentiation comes from clarity of why. So using that as a base, and there's Simon again, what we, what we did was went a little bit further and we actually showed a little clip. I'm going to show you that clip right now from an interview with, with, with Simon, a special interview that we did for a conference uh, around B1G1. We'll talk about B1G1 in just a minute. But for now, have a listen to this. And I actually heard a guy give a speech. He was given an award and he said, why I get out of bed in the morning is because I see myself as Indiana Jones. And he says, that's, that's who I am, right? And every day is an adventure and yet, and that's why I do it. And you're like, he, told, he used a fictional character yeah, to yeah. illustrate what he meant as opposed to, so in other words, something we can latch onto. We're very tangibly driven animals. We're no good with the abstract. So very often, whys become weirdly abstract. Yeah, they that's do, right. don't they? Yeah. That's why a vision statement is important, because a vision has to be something you can see. It's why it's called vision, see, right? So you, you could, that's why my vision, so I tell you my why. My why is to inspire people to do the things that inspire them. Sounds good, I guess, but my vision in other words, based on my why, I can imagine a, what the world would look like if everything goes perfectly, right? And my why, my vision rather, is to inspire people, sorry, my vision is to create a world in which the vast majority of people wake up every single morning inspired to go to work, feel safe when they're there, and return home at the end of the day fulfilled by the work that they do. That's the world I want to build, mm. right? Now it's based on my why, but my why is too abstract, too ethereal. But when I say that, people go, oh, I'd like to live in that world too. And that's the crucial point, that when you get it, then people will be much more compelled to deal with you. It's such a crucial point. So make sure you, uh, you access all of the follow-up material that goes with this from the guys at, at uh, ABN. 
Getting back to the conference now, one of the things we spent maybe 45 minutes talking about, and we're going to do it in maybe 45 seconds, is this thing called the huge bow of small. How tiny, tiny little things that you do in your business actually have massive, massive impact. Now, you might say, well, how could you possibly do that in 45 seconds and sort of leave me hanging? The answer to that is that we are going to be doing some uh, follow-up sessions uh, right around Australia, as I understand it, uh, with the guys from ABN. So do stay tuned for those sessions. And then one of the things we did at the conference is we talked about how you, again, if you if you will, how you build this business that matters by not actually talking about it, by doing something. So have a look at what Sir Richard Branson said about this. He said, what we need to do is explore this next great frontier where the boundaries between work and higher purpose are merging into one, where doing good really is good for business. And to do that, we introduced, or to illustrate that, to actually get people to act on that, we actually introduced them to a wonderful thing called Buy One, Give One, or B1G1, Business for Good. And we illustrated how, you can see it on your screen here, that you can create what we call giving stories, so that you're able to do things in your business. For example, when you create a new client, you might provide, and you, you've got a choice. I mean, there's 857 projects that you can choose from, but you might say we provide five days of computer education to children in need, or how about this? When you do a bass, you might give one day of access to e-learning, which completely changes the lives of, of, of those kids. Uh, and, and all because you're just doing what you normally do, but as a result, some astounding things are, happen are happening. Now, when people got that at the conference, they understood very clearly that this is not about donating and all of that sort of stuff. What this is about, what B1G1 is about, is actually mattering. And that's, again, one of the key threads of what we, uh, what we talked about at the conference. So B1G1, then, another way of saying this is that what B1G1 does, it helps you build an extraordinary business that impacts lives and that it does that each and every day. Now, one of the things we talked about is how people become a part of B1G1 and hopefully you might get to that very soon as well. And fortunately, mass, a, a real mass of bookkeepers at the conference said, wow, this is really stunning and I want to be a part of this. So when you're exposed to B1G1 down the track, Hopefully you'll want to join them as well. And when you do, we will say this to you. Welcome to Mattering so that you can see, as you can see on the bottom of your screen right there, every time someone does business with us, meaning with you, so you can make sure that something great happens in our world. You also will get a different view of the world. You'll be able to see very firmly that opportunity is now here. The opportunity to do amazing things. The opportunity to create an amazing business in these amazing times. And here at B1G1, we're thrilled to be partnering with ABN in making that happen. The reality is, again, as you see on your screen, there's never been a time like this. And B1G1 together with ABN makes that happen. Again, to go back to where we were at the conference, for me, it was a massive shift, a massive shift, and one that we've been working on to, uh, to consolidate, if you will, to expand in the days uh, since the conference. And the good news is we'll be doing that throughout 2016 and 2017. So make sure that you stay tuned for all of the wonderful things that are coming up from ABN. Again, it's been my pleasure to just give you this quick wrap. I'm not sure that we did it in nine minutes. I hope we did. And I hope that you got value from that which we did and that you have an extraordinary day. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm looking forward to working with you much more and to connecting with you. Bye.